What we didn't know was that in Espiritu Santo, they had all these health checkpoints. And uh, we had no idea what was going on. We just drove for our car and suddenly we were stopped by police looking people and medical officials because they wanted to know where we're we going and what we we're doing. Hey, so my friends, we're here for the second episode of the second season of the Adventure Escape Diaries. We made it to Brazil and in this episode you will mostly hear about us going camping and exploring the north, especially the uh, state of Espiritu Santo. What has been happening for a while now is that uh, we were in Brazil and we wanted to make sure that we discover more of the country. We didn't really know where to go, so we just drove north and the next best uh, state north was Espiritu Santo. Espiritu Santo is one of the uh, smaller states in Brazil, but nevertheless has a beautiful coastline. And so what our plan was is to find an Airbnb place where we could stay a little bit longer. So in order we can uh, do some work, relax a little bit and make sure that we really enjoy this time that we are in Brazil. What we didn't know was that in Espiritu Santo, they had all these health checkpoints and uh, we had no idea what was going on. We just drove for our car and suddenly we were stopped by police looking people and medical officials because they wanted to know where we're we going and what we we're doing. So we didn't want really to be part of this game. So we decided to not go to certain places that needed a health checkpoint. They wanted us to have reservations for certain hotels and they wanted to make sure that we booked them in advance. That's just not how we travel. Usually we go to places, we want to check them out and then see what they look like. And then maybe we'll stay there for a while. Now in Espiritu Santo, this was not possible. So we decided to go camping instead. We found a really nice location where a lot of people told us that camping is an option. The place was called Pico Pedra Azul. And it was uh, one of these really beautiful looking mountains that look almost like the Sugarloaf Mountain in uh, Rio de Janeiro. So we thought the best idea would be to just drive with our Prado all the way up the mountain or at least as close as we can get to the hiking site and then go camping there. Now that sounded a lot easier than it really was because at this point in time we didn't see any other people wanting to go camping. It got dark so we ended up needing a place to stay. Google Maps showed a lot of campsites and we tried to reach them and for some reason they weren't there. We couldn't find any campsites. It was just crazy. Eventually we found something and it was a really beautiful place. The campsite we went was Matilde next to Carolina. It was so remote and there were just no one was there camping. And we ended up parking our car right next to a river and we have lots of footage about that. So check it out. This is our first campsite uh, with the Prado. We slept inside the car. Sleeping was kind of nice. The only thing you really hear at this place is uh, this river. This is the river. The night, similar to sleeping on a air mattress, you don't have a lot of space to move around, but I think it's doable. Temperature was perfect for sleeping in the car. I think somebody is getting is getting up right now. That was the, the sleeping process in the car. I'm gonna give a little bit of a tour. This is where we are. Platform is 
basically covered with this air mattress. We have pillows and all our luggage is either underneath, down here, or in front. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty dark in here. I open this. And here you can see it a lot better. Uh, here is parts of the luggage. This is now our kitchen equipment and this is our car equipment and the kitchen stove. This is what that looks like. After this wonderful experience in nature, we decided to actually go and take our first Airbnb. In this uh, place we went to Vitoria. Vitoria is the capital of uh, Espiritu Santo of the state. And uh, we found an Airbnb there and we stayed for about a week. Now, Vitoria is almost like a little Rio de Janeiro. It's the same kind of city vibe, but without the tourists. So for some reason, they just don't make it up the coast. We were like the only tourists there. It was like completely empty. I guess it was the time too. But then again, you have these beautiful mountains and we decided to go hiking in Victoria. And you, you can like hike up these mountains the steep way or the easy way. And obviously we chose the steep way. Ended up uh, fighting with some birds and then we made it all the way up and had a beautiful view. It's uh, actually quite simple to get up here. We're not sweaty at all. It's super easy. We didn't slip or anything like that. Everything seems to be fine, right? Good stuff. And now we're here. So this is uh, Vitoria. People use these mountains to go paragliding as well. So up there they just, uh, you know, take the mountains, they hike up and then they paraglide down. Something I definitely want to do at some point. We also managed to get our car fixed a little bit, at least we thought so. We had a little bit of a problems with our brakes. They were squeaking sometimes and so I thought something might be wrong. But, you know, the uh, the guy that we went to, he took off the brake pads and he checked them out and he said they were fine. It's just a little bit of wear and tear and eventually at some point we will have to change them. Victoria was a full success and uh, beautiful beaches there. We checked out a couple of them and you definitely can spend a really, really nice time in Victoria. But it was time for us to move on. This time we moved further north to Concession de Baja. Now in Concession de Baja, we uh, didn't find any people. We were walking on the beach and there was no one. So I don't know what's happening, but seemingly everything here is empty. Now we're by the beach uh, and as you can see, uh, uh, nobody is here. There is actually a lot of empty restaurants right here but uh, nobody really is at the beach. Yeah, it's beautiful. A lot of dunes uh, this way and a lot of dunes uh, the other way. But here we have Ali uh, getting a drink. Caipirinha. A caipirinha, nice. Okay, so that's pretty cool. We are right now always trying to find short notice hotels, but we definitely need something more long-term. And we hope that further up the coast, north, this is north, uh, there is actually some good places where we can stay for like a month or so. And I think that would be really nice. So far so good. Greetings from the beach. We had the letters of the, the village there. And so we didn't know that it seemingly was prohibited to walk on those letters and uh, just after the fact, I kind of read the sign and I said, don't walk on the letters. It ended up being kind of an interesting experience. Babe, come back! Ah! <laughs> oh my God. Another one behind you! Behind! I'm having a bit of a troubles here. <laughs> There's like three birds right over there and they have little baby birds and they didn't want to let me go through so I had to fight with them a little bit. And uh, now <laughs> Allie is waiting over there. She doesn't want to come through because they're, they were attacking us. Like three of them coming at us so I was always like just pushing them away. Allie took a video and now <laughs> I need to go back. We'll see. 
I'm gonna get attacked too. Now we went further up north to the village of Itaunas and this one is uh, famous for its dunes. We did have to check them out, but before that we checked in to a very beautiful hostel, Villa Cicinho. It's a beautiful place. It looks like it's right into the jungle. We have uh, a swimming pool there and lots of like tiny little huts and we had a really nice beautiful place for staying overnight. And in this uh, nice village we walked around and we saw all these uh, beautiful looking uh, little houses and we met this uh, woman. Her name is Pere and she has a restaurant, Casa de Pere. She was uh, really, really helpful. We ate there a couple of times because she had really good food and uh, she told us about all these places that we should go to in the state that is north of Espirito Santo. And this is Bahia, but not before we checked out the dunes of Itaunas. this opportunity of the sunset behind me and the beautiful beach to just uh, yeah say uh, thank you world to have places like this and thank you guys who are watching to be part of this with me I guess one of the reasons why I can do this is because there's people out there like you who are interested in enjoying this whole thing with me and I I'm doing this because I I want you guys to get motivated to come and join me and you know enjoy this together right now Brazil but uh, who knows what's next probably going back to Paraguay to pick up the documents and then I want to see all countries in South America so Prado needs to be ready our little car uh, to travel and see it all. I want to wish you a good night. So these were the wonderful dunes that we had to experience and it was a beautiful day and with this our last day in Espiritu Santo came to an end and we were excited about discovering more of Brazil and the next state would be Bahia. If you like this kind of content, just go ahead and click here to subscribe to this channel and then click here to watch the next video. So I'll see you then.